When I did my first V-carve, I really didn't expect to have metal shrapnel all over my shop, but guess you gotta learn one way or another, huh? I'd love to be able to tell you why the bit absolutely shattered and threw shrapnel all over my shop, but I can't seem to figure out why. I used the recommended speeds and feeds from Tools Today that I downloaded directly from their tool database. I was using soft pine plywood. My router was on the appropriate speed around 18 or 20,000 RPM. I honestly can't tell you what went wrong. But I know when I started seeing that wood turn to a darker color, something wasn't right. There was too much friction. And when I shut the machine off, literally the knife was just gone. You know what? I better back up a few steps. I learned a couple of other things throughout this process. Let me share those things with you first. So the very first thing I learned actually happened at the computer before I even came out to the CNC. What I learned was you can't highlight all of the graphics as well as the border, even if you're going to program it all with the same bit, because when you're doing a V-carve, it will actually remove the background instead of carve out the individual things. So you have to program a toolpath for the border and program a separate toolpath for everything in the middle. I think there's a lot of little nuances we'll say with vCarve Pro like that that I'm just learning myself so that's one that I learned simply when I ran that first animation and my background disappeared I knew I needed to try something different so I separated the two tool paths but in the end I was still able to save it as two separate tool paths one file so that it would run the entire job at the same time so the second thing I just wanted to touch on was securing your material down to the bed. This was my third cut on the Onefinity, so I'm not experienced. I am a new learner, uh, just like some of you. So last time I used that double-sided tape, this time I wanted to go a slightly different route. And so I used my PowerTech T-Track and the clamps, just keeping them really close to the edges so that there wouldn't be any interference with the bit. Um, those are easy to grab on Amazon if you're in the market for it. The aluminum is soft, um, but it works for me. So if you need some, just check the description. I'll put a link there for you. Um, the other thing I used was brad nails. I just popped one in each corner and this was a test run. So I knew that I could put them in the corners and it wouldn't be an issue. Now here's one I wasn't expecting. That little Makita trim router vibrates like crazy. So the speed dial actually moves all on its own. A simple piece of tape will fix this. I know there are some uh, makers on Etsy who 3D print little pieces you can put on there so it won't rotate, but man, check this out. When I was running this job, I was thinking, man, this doesn't sound right. And I checked the Makita router and saw that the speed had dropped all the way down to one. So I quickly slapped some tape on there and it held for the rest of the carve, but just something to be aware of. Ooh, yeah, I gotta tell you guys, I was messing with an accessory I bought and I didn't double check the tightness of my bolts on the Z slider, um, kind of the clamp that holds the router on there. And also during this carve, one of the bolts started to back out. So you can actually see me on this time lapse uh, tightening a bolt. So just a little word to the wise, double check your machine before you run any job. Make sure there's not dust building up in your collet. Um, tighten any bolts that might have been loosened prior. I mean, wow. Good one, Christy. The next thing I learned was that I think in the future, I'm going to actually make my worksheet on the computer a little bit larger and, and actually put a profile cut to cut the sign out. Um, that way, if I don't square it up properly on the wasteboard, when I actually go to do the cut, um, it'll cut it out 
in relation to the lettering and graphics and so you'll always end up with that perfectly square sign. Otherwise, if you're just hoping you lined up your finished piece on there properly and do your carve, there's a chance it might not be perfectly squared up. Um, like say you have a sign that's 10 by 16 um, on the CNC and you carve it, you have to really make sure you square that uh, piece up on your waste board. Whereas if you design it as a 10 by 16 piece on the computer and make the CNC actually cut out the finished piece. So your glue up your backboard piece will actually maybe be 12 by 18. Then let the CNC cut it out with a profile tool path. And that way you're guaranteed your finish sign is going to definitely be square. The other thing I've seen people do is put like a little uh, L corner bracket of sorts on the front left corner of their waste board and that way they know that is square and they can always bring their material into that corner and butt it up there and they know that it's always going to be square. I hope that made sense. If it didn't, reach out and I'll tell you what I mean. Here we go. Here's the next one. Always wear your protective equipment. Uh, thankfully I had mine on. Somewhere during the carve, my knife. I had a 60 degree bit running with a removable knife in it and it actually shattered and turned into shrapnel. Um, thankfully, most of it went in the back left corner of my shop away from where I was standing, but heaven forbid it would have come at me. Uh, <laughs> metal knives are sharp, guys. Always wear your safety glasses. Um, I like to have a respirator on as well. Uh, I will be getting dust collection, but I still want to wear that because that if you don't have a face shield, that acts as a pretty good face shield. Um, and then I always have my hearing protection on as well, just because it's a loud machine. But even those just feel like another layer of protection. And if that metal shrapnel would have come at me, most of my face was covered. I didn't have an apron on. I don't know if a canvas apron could have stopped a metal shard flying at 20,000 revolutions per minute from entering my body. <laughs> but I would say it's highly unlikely that those blades would um, come out and break apart. We're not really sure what happened. Hopefully a fluke freak accident. Um, but yeah, that's my main point in saying please wear your protective equipment this is a tool that's spinning at a high rate and you never know what can happen so you need to protect yourself when the job finished and i turned off my router and saw that there was no knife in there i was like uh what i'm new to this but i'm pretty sure that's not supposed to happen and i actually could tell towards the end of the carve there was starting to be burning in the lettering the lettering was all of a sudden darker um, so i knew something was up but i didn't expect that um, just some other general observations i made things that i learned i programmed a ramp for the v-groove bit and i don't think that was necessary after talking to some friends um, Mine didn't come programmed with a depth set, and so I picked a depth, but after looking at what it did on the machine, it totally did not like listen to what I programmed. So I think V-bits, what I'm learning, are intuitive. What I mean by that is when you program, say, some lettering, um, you'll see the outline of the letter, and when you program it, the V-bit knows to go between those two lines. It's not going to try to follow on the line because that would make your letters distorted, right? It's distorted, right? They would be too wide. The V-bit in a V-carve toolpath is going to carve away all the material inside these vectors. It's not going to cut on the vector. It's going to cut inside the vectors. Um, so what I found was the 60 degree bit was perfect for the inch to one and a half inch lettering that I did and it did a nice job on the bigger letters as well that were closer to three or four inches um, but the thing is the wider your letter gets if you use that 60 degree bit um, it, ha it has to go deeper into the material 
because it's gonna keep carving out until the widest part of your bit reaches those lines or the edges of the letters. So I think I would have preferred to use a 90 degree bit for the bigger uh, lettering. And if you do want more detail on how bigger bits work, I encourage you to go over to Mark Lindsay's YouTube page and watch his um, V carving for the absolute beginner series of videos there that uh, help me a lot and I know they'll help you too. I think that's about it. Um, that was just my first test run. It is for a client, so eventually I will need to do this on the final work piece, but I knew I wanted to do a test run first because I was positive that I would screw something up. And really being successful in this space means not looking at instances like this as a failure, you have to look at it as a learning opportunity, okay? When things don't go right, you are one step closer to understanding how to get them to go right. So keep trying, keep working at it. Um, running a CNC is no small thing. So reach out, um, join Onefinity's Facebook community. It's a resource full of people who wanna help and they are fantastic. Onefinity also has a forum online where you can search questions that people have already asked and get answers just like that. Um, Onefinity's support is also incredible. So you're joining a good community. We're glad to have you. Reach out if you have any questions. I'm a beginner just like many of you are, so we can learn together. So if you liked the video today, please consider subscribing. It'll keep you in the loop for future videos, especially if you hit that little bell you'll get notifications each time I get out a video to you. And uh, hey, comment what you liked about this video. If you made it this far, consider commenting cheeseburger. It lets me know you watched the entire video and you are really here for it. All right. I thought I heard something out there. Curse of filming in your garage as a small business owner. See you guys.